So I know that this looks like I'm engaging in some kind of homesteading kitchen action, like I'm baking some delicious casserole or pastry or I don't know, I don't really bake, so I don't know what this looks like. But this actually is mushroom related. So in the process of wanting to grow more oyster mushrooms, I need a way of sort of propagating going forward. And normally with like typical plants, you'd collect seeds, but with mushrooms, you gotta collect the spores. So what I'm doing is taking spore prints. Now this method of spore print taking is meant to be more sterile than what is often suggest suggested. Because a lot of people suggest that you take the mushroom cap, you put it on some paper, maybe cover it, maybe, and then the spores will drop on the paper and there you go. The problem I've found with that is that who knows what other kinds of spores, mold spores and other such contaminants are getting in there and contaminating the spore print. And who knows what spores are on the paper beforehand. Paper's also annoying to work with because when you scrape the spores off, you end up scraping fibers of paper and it's just gross. So tin foil is the way to go. And what I'm doing is hopefully slightly more sterile. And this is actually a baking, a baking pan with two layers of foil on it, the foil underneath and then the foil cover. And I put this, just the foils and the baking pan in the oven at 250 degrees for 30 minutes to hopefully kill off anything that might be living on the foil. And then I quickly open it and cover it. And I did this yesterday, so they're actually ready. And I put the caps down. Those are the oyster mushroom caps that I harvested from my little humidity fruiting chamber over there. And I've left this for not quite a full day. I might let them go a little bit longer. But when you're done, you pull these up and I don't want to uncover it too much because again, I don't want too much contaminants. But can you, can you see the white? That is the spores, the oyster mushroom spores that have fallen onto the, to the tin foil. So what I'm going to do is off camera. I'm not going to do this now because again, I want to be able to have both hands and do this right. I shouldn't even opened it as much as I did to be quite honest, but I'm going to remove all the caps, eat them or whatever you do with mushrooms. <laughs> throw them to the chickens, who knows? But I'm going to remove the caps and I'm gonna keep this mostly covered. I'm gonna let some air flow because I want any moisture that's come off of those because again, mushrooms are mostly water. So there's a lot of moisture in there too. I want that to dry off so that I can have just dry spores on the tin foil and then I can store them. Or probably what I'll do is immediately scrape them into to, uh, distilled water and put in syringes to inject uh, jars of grain for creating more spawn. So that's basically the life cycle of farming mushrooms at home. You know, you get the spores, you make spore prints, you take the spore prints, you make syringes, you inject those, the, the liquid uh, spores into sterilized pressure cooked jars of grain, let the spore, the mycelium develop. So you have spawn to then spawn to straw, and then you put the straw in a fruiting chamber and grow mushrooms. Seems like a lot of work for such a simple thing, but you know, it's with, with, with mushrooms, growing mushrooms, it's all about being as clean as possible and as sterile as possible where possible. And there you go. And I'll definitely keep you updated on this whole thing. So I'm going to do a video of creating the syringes. I'm going to do a video of injecting those syringes, that solution into sterilized jars. I'll probably do a video on me sterilizing the jars and preparing those jars. And I'll take you through the whole life cycle. So this video is meant to just share with you my, how I'm doing spore prints. And I will be honest, I've done this in the past and it has been successful. So hopefully it'll continue to be successful and I'll have lower and lower contaminant issues. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll definitely keep you updated. I appreciate your support and I appreciate that you join me on this journey.